All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Charlie Weir here with Ms. Cece Moya to come with you with some more sickle cell myth busters. So in fact, the purpose of this whole series is really to make you understand that there's so many different ways you can help yourself and also help your loved one battle sickle cell and be so successful. So the reason why CC and I are teaming up to have these phenomenal interviews, she has the mom perspective. I have the um, doctor perspective as well as the patient and also uh, CC um, has a trait and also suffers some different things as well. So we have both sides of it, being a caregiver, a practitioner, as well as patients ourselves. So we wanna make sure that we're able to reach you guys with the information that's important to you and only for you. So guys, let's jump into it. Cece, how are we doing today? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, I had a nice long holiday and um, we had a conversation about that earlier, but I'm doing well, I'm doing well. So thank you so much for asking. Love it, love it. Yeah, we can jump right in. I have a list of questions that some of our followers and fellow moms and dads who have children with sickle cell and themselves have sickle cell too. And um, some of the, you know, really pressing questions that almost everybody has is uh, how to raise hemoglobin levels. Because wow. when you go to the doctors and they take your, your blood and they want to know, you know, what you've been doing to keep it up. Um, if you're not, especially if you're not taking hydroxyurea or other, um, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, how do you raise your hemoglobin or keep them at a good level? Yeah, great. That's a great question. And, you know, I, I, I love when we are able to answer these questions that people are asking. So let me go ahead and jump into it. There are several reasons why hemoglobin levels are lower. It's not just, okay, you have sickle cell disease and it's going to be low. So let's just take it off the table, right? Because, um, you know, I was talking to some patients yesterday and they have SS sickle cell um, and their hemoglobin level is always over a 10, you know, and they are just doing all the right things. But let me give you a few reasons why it may be low. And then I answer the question on how to even increase it. So one reason why it may be low, one, as I always say, you may be malnutrient. You're not eating the proper diet to allow your body to have all the nutrients that is going to allow the body to, to pr produce the hemoglobin on a, on a higher level. Um, the body needs certain minerals. You know, yes, we need the calcium, magnesium, but we also need like phosphorus. We need you know, manganese and, and, and selenium, zinc, all these things that actually help the hemoglobin you know, really build up to, you, to be the best it can. As well as, as well as essential fatty acids that actually help the, the, the shape of the hemoglobin to actually maintain itself as well. So yes, the, the hemp oils, the coconut oils, the palm oils, all these great oils that the body needs to actually help to maintain the, the actual circular or, or, or spherical aspect of the actual cell. And then it may be a situation where your body is not able to even hold on to it. And that's a different component versus making it and also hold on to it. The whole non to it aspect can be a late infection you may be having. And I discuss this often when people are not understanding, well, I, I don't have an infection. I, I have my blood work here, my, 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 my white blood cell count, and you know, the sound of fills and things of that sort are very, very, you know, within range. I say it's not that like that that uh, type of infection. I'm not talking about a viral infection. I'm not talking about a bacterial infection. I'm saying I'm talking about maybe a fungal infection, especially if you're someone who has been on um, antibiotics for a long time, or even a short period of time, your microbiome has now been affected to the point where it is not having enough of the right bacteria in your system to break down the food to give you the right things. So having the incorrect microbiome can also be allow your body not to produce the right amount of hemoglobin because it's still struggling. So you gotta get the stomach cleaned up as well. So another thing is I have a lot of inf infections uh, as far as like latent sinus infections or Women may also be having some latent um, UTIs, you know, after you have sex or before or after you appear, you may have a small UTI or a yeast infection here and there. Those are different signs that says that the body doesn't have the right microbiome to hold on to nutrients efficiently. So now you're creating a bad bacteria that can cause different issues as well. Sleep. Let's go ahead and jump into sleep really quick. Sleep can be one of the reasons why your body is not resting well enough to even allow your body to repair, to now do the job of now creating and restructuring the body to be more efficiently um, as well. 
Um, and actually, I'm sorry, I'm jumping back into the, the infections. There's an effect, there's several infections that actually, if you get them, they actually do reduce the actual hemoglobin level. The, the, the parable virus is one of the viruses that, you know, the definition of it is when you get it, you're going to have a cold like symptoms, like, you know, cough, sneeze, and things of that sort. Uh, maybe feel run down for a day or two, but the telltale sign of it is the fact that it actually lowers the hemoglobin level. Um, and this is in the, the normal um, individuals as well. Uh, so it, it's, it's different ways of actually looking at the reason why you may actually have a, a lower um, hemoglobin rate. Now, how can we now improve these things? First, as I just, just mentioned, you first are going to look at the fact that let's improve your microbiome. It's not just probiotics, guys. You gotta also make sure you're eating the proper diet of prebiotics, which is you know, a, a fibrous food, fruits and veggies. Um, you're not doing things because, uh, uh, again, a report came out just uh, three weeks ago showing that how a lot of these dyes and preservatives inside of our food is really affecting our microbiome and also decreasing the rate of our hemoglobin levels and also hormonal production as well. Cut out the processed foods. Soon, the second thing you want to do is actually look at, you know, is it possible that you may have a latent infection somewhere, maybe due to the microbiome or something that wasn't taken care of? So, yeah, you, you might want to contact your doctor to see if you got a sinus infection, yeast infection, things of that sort. It's just very, very easy to do. Or just take different herbs that are great for antibiotics. So, uh, our malcare, our virid, um, you can take olive leaf, you can take golden seal, you can take um, something that I actually tell patients to take for a long period of time is actually colloidal silver. I was going to tell them to take that because it's called colloidal silver. Colloidal silver. silver. Yeah, it's something that, you know, it's very, very good for, you know, um, infections all over the body. Um, it, it does with fungal infections, viral, and also bacterial infections as well. So that's those. You take an everyday, long-term, safe place. Yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, and, and if you don't want to OD over it, the only issue with colloidal silver, if you take too much of it, your skin might turn blue. blue. Yeah, yeah. And I have seen some people like hands and feet turn blue. I was like, oh, he's taking way too much of it, so back off of it. So, um, and then the other thing, of course, you want to make sure that you're getting all the nutrients. If you're not having the proper nutrition, you're going to look at what you're eating. You're going to also want to take things that are very nutrient dense. So focus on veggie, fruits, and also proteins. Make sure you have a balanced diet with that. If you can have some sort of starch, like a, a rice, make sure you soak the rice overnight or soak your oatmeal overnight. And basically soak all your grains and beans and lugones overnight to make sure you're getting all of the nutrients that you can out of it by taking away all the phytic acids and things of that sort. You're cut Sorry, out. What, what does that do when you soak it overnight? Hmm? What does that do when you soak it overnight? So when you soak things overnight, one, you're allowing them to sprout. You allow them to actually rehydrate itself efficiently. So you allow all of the nutrients to be sort of fresh. But also inside of a lot of the hulls of these things, um, it's something called phytic acid that actually, um, if you eat or drink too much of it, it can actually take a lot of your, your trace mineral um, uptake away. It'll make you, um, you're deficient inside of it. So the phytic acid. But in, all, or in order to unlock the, the full potential of any sort of grain, you should soak it overnight. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, um, uh, again, like I said, soak the grains overnight, make sure you're eating enough fruits and veggies, and then, and not just juicing them, and not just um, having them in smoothies. And those things are great, great ways to, to make it quick and easy, but by eating the fruit, you're also having the fiber. You know, when you actually have a smoothie and have a centrifuge, you actually are breaking up some of those enzymes inside um, that fruit or, or that veggie that can be vital. So you can also be doing damage to it. That's why I tell people eat more than, than drink, okay? Eat your fruits and veggies more than drink them. Like juices, I love over smoothies any day of the week anyway. And then lastly, how are you going to supplement yourself? How are you going to make sure that you're going to supplement yourself and be efficient about it? First, as I said before, make sure you're taking uh, things that are have a, an action of being anti-inflammatory and also an, a slight antibiotic. And when I say antibiotic, I'm not saying you know, just antibiotics, and antiviral, uh, antifungal, and also um, uh, antibiotic as well. So I'm saying that olive leaf, I'm saying, like I said, the colloidal silver, I mean, you, you can take these little micro doses of these things on a daily basis just to make sure you're killing it, but also preventing it as well. You know, our virus, we have individuals take that prophylactically, you know, all year round, because once you're preventing, also anything that's in your system, you're slowly killing off anyway. Um, our marrow care is phenomenal for helping with gut issues as well. And that's what we created, I'm Happy Belly. 
Um, so how are you long -term, also taking long-term as well too? A Malker, I will say, you know, take that for only about two months every day, only about two months. And the reason why it's so strong is going to kill everything inside the system, but also is going to let the body rebuild itself as well. So it's not one of these antibiotics or antifungals or whatever that just kills everything. It helps the body also rebuild the same token. But I don't want people, it's so strong, that I don't want you taking it on a daily basis forever and ever and ever. That's why we created a virus that's a little bit less strong that only focuses more so on the viral and antibacterial and aspects of things as well. So and when you take it for two months, what, how long of a break do you need before you I'll, start? I'll say about a two month break as well. So you take okay. two months, take another um, two month break. And, and the reason why, I mean, we, we, we've done some, some clinical trials with um, um, Malcare. Yeah, it really does help to defeat the, the, the malaria virus uh, or, or the malaria parasite. So it does help to kill parasites inside of the gut and also inside the body as well. And it does have antiviral and also antifungal uh, properties inside of it. That being said, we don't want something that strong being taken a long period of time, unless there's really, really, really an issue. I had someone that actually had thrush and these other real strong fungal infections throughout the entire body. And we kept giving it to that person with these people, the group of them for, for about four months on a daily basis. And we were eventually able to get it all away. Um, the reason why we did that, like I said, because it's so strong you have to make sure you're not just killing it, to allow the body to repair itself at the same time as well. So and that's what um, I really love about the herbs and the plants. That's what I what I really got from you is the fact that it has this synergist, synergistic um, ability to not only take care of whatever infection that is present in the body, but it could be healing things that we don't even know need healing in the body too. Yeah, and, and that's what I love about that. It's not just killing everything off, and then you have to you know basically it's a reset. Yeah. But with herbs and plants. Um, it's that healing aspect. It's like we're killing off the bad stuff, but at the same time, we're preparing the body as well to be strong enough, even for maybe the next round of infections. Exactly. So I love that. 